there are probably people out there that are ICs or managers even that maybe dread the one-on-one, dread coming to them, dread having what to say, like how they should go. What's your advice there for someone that knows it's important, knows it's kind of these one, this, you know, FaceTime, this like one-on-one time with your, your manager, someone that has a lot of impact on your career, but dreads it. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, that one's a hard one. I think we've all dreaded a meeting at some point in our careers or like, oh, what if I just don't show up or what if I cancel? But I think the one-on-ones are really, really important. If your manager's canceling your one-on-ones, that's pretty disrespectful. If you're the person who's having the one-on-one, you're like, oh, I don't want to show up. Let me just not show up. That shows equally that you don't want to be there. And I think that's such a waste of like valuable time to be able to connect with someone, especially someone who, you know, is going to advocate for you. They should be your biggest advocate. Um, if they're not your b- biggest advocate, then really think about what do you want to get out of that meeting? Always ask yourself, like, what do you want out of that meeting? Sometimes it's an answer to a hypothetical question. I've done that before where I've asked, like, OK, if you're in this type of situation or take, for example, this kind of stuff happens, what would you do? Or what's your philosophy behind I remember asking like management questions like, what's your philosophy behind like office politics or why do you think office politics happen? And it was really interesting. And you get to hear people's frameworks and thoughts and things about it. And you're, I'm always surprised at the answer. So sometimes it can be like that. Like I, I've had one on ones where people are asking me like, OK, w- what is your philosophy behind engineering management or what, what it is? So you can really just know like one on ones are... There's no set in stone way to conduct a one-on-one. It can really be a conversation about career development. It can be a conversation about what happened this week. It can be about work performance. It can even be about like what's happening in the company, you know, like things like that. So just know that there's a lot of versatility when it comes to one-on-ones. And if it's helpful for you to just prompt that before a one-on-one so that you can get the information that you need or you can ensure that the one-on-one to the best of your ability ends up being useful to you, I think that's the best way to handle them because you have to manage your time. Like if you're sitting in one-on-ones and you hate every single one of them, that's not going to motivate you to make better career decisions when you get the opportunity to, you know, you might just be like, oh, (sighs) these one-on-ones suck. And then, you know, manager says like, oh, there's this really cool opportunity I think you might like, and you're not open to it because you're like, oh, this one-on-one sucks, you know, and you might miss something. So ensure that you manage your mindset before and after coming in or as you're coming into the one-on-ones. If you enjoyed this clip, make sure you watch the entire video, which has a lot more content just like this. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our episodes where we talk to leaders in the tech industry, from software engineers to product managers to engineering managers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and also click the notification bell. 